So how do we get that sap out of the tree? Well, we drill a hole and we make a cavity. So what we'll do is we'll take a drill, either a drill, electric drill or a manual drill if you don't have electrical power, with a bit on it that's either 3 8 or 5 16 diameter. We want to make sure that we get the, the cavity a certain size in the tree. Uh, if it's a tree that's over 30 centimeters, we'll want, we can go two to three inches into the sapwood. So I find that it's handy to actually measure seven or eight centimeters or two or three inches into the sapwood and mark my drill bit with a pen at that depth. So I've, I've marked my drill bit at, in, my, in this case, two and a half inches, because that's the depth that I will want to make my hole in this tree, so that I don't penetrate the darker sapwood, which could have off flavors if, that, if, if the sap from the dark wood gets into the syrup. We want to get the syrup from this band of sapwood. So later we'll go outside and actually tap a few trees so that we can see how this is really done. But basically we just drill a hole right up into the tree to the depth of the, the mark on the blade there, on the uh, drill bit. And then we will put a spile into that hole. We'll tap that spile right into the hole. We'll, out, we'll do this in real life so you'll see how that works. So the spile will be hanging off the tree there. The spile has a hole on the underside of the tip that's in the tree. So as that chamber fills up with sap, some of the sap will flow into that hole and come dripping out the spile. And then we'll hang a bucket on the spile. And so the uh, sap will run into the bucket. And then each day we'll go and collect the buckets. So here's a bucket with a spile. Um, So you can kind of see that's going to be in the tree and the bucket will be hanging off the tree and the sap will collect in the bucket. Almost anything can be used as a spile. Um, these metal ones are really durable and handy and, and uh, have been around a long time and they last a long time. Um, currently now a lot of people are using plastic ones which, which do the same work. Um, in historic times people just took a, pe a flat piece of wood and stuck them into the hole in the tree and the sap would just drop off the stick of wood. So you don't even need technology like this in order to collect sap. And, uh, but it does make it a little simpler, a little bit more straightforward. So once you get your spile in the tree, then you need to attach a container to the, to the tree a lot of people use buckets. Some people might use a one gallon container, maybe an old milk carton, uh, and then just uh, have the tap in the side of the container there. Uh, and then, but one way that I have found that works real well is if I just take a milk container with a plastic tube that comes out of the milk container, and I can just plug that tube right into the spile and then the milk container might be sitting on the ground or I might hang, have it hanging off the tree. And as you can see in the picture, um, the sap just runs out of the tree through the tube and into the container. So, and then I've even done it where I just drill the hole in the tree, even without the spile, and I can just jam the plastic tube up in that cavity. That can work also in most cases. Sometimes it falls out, so just why it's a little bit better to use a spile which you've pounded into the tree. But though either way, the technology is not important as long as you can collect the sap every day and you can have it in a container that is uh, somewhat closed so that it doesn't get a lot of rain in it. And also so animals don't come and drink it from you because that could be 
contaminated. In a few minutes, we'll go outside and actually tap some trees. Uh, and, and so we'll show how that's done. There's a, a couple of things which we'll need to keep in mind. And that is that we are drilling a hole into the living tree. And so we want to give the tree every opportunity it can to avoid infection in that hole. So we need to be a little bit careful when we're drilling that hole to make sure that our drill bit is sanitized from time to time, maybe even between trees, if as we're drilling into the wood we see some discoloration in the sapwood, we'll want to make sure that the drill bit is clean and sanitized between trees, especially if the tree is unhealthy. And we'll also want to make sure that our spiles are sanitized before we put them into the tree. You can use mini disinfectants in order to sanitize the drill bit or the spiles. But one that I usually use is hydrogen peroxide, which you can use straight from the jar if you get it at the drugstore. Um, I just put some into a container. Um, it's at a 3%, which is a really good concentration. Or you can use, I actually use a stronger form, and then I dilute it. So this is 29% here. So I'll put some of this in there and then add water to it. In order to get enough volume, into the container so that I can just put my spiles right in there and that I can also put my drill bit into this the hydrogen peroxide to let it sanitize. I leave them in there for a minute or two uh, at the beginning and then just wipe it with some of the hydrogen peroxide between trees then that will be enough to keep things clean. We just want to give the tree every opportunity it can to heal up well from the, the hole that we'll drill. And, but the tree will <laughs> seal up this hole. Uh, it usually takes one to two years because uh, the only place, as I said, the only place where you can get growth to heal is from the inner bark. So, um, but this will refill with wood as the tree grows up and it will reseal. And in most cases, uh, it is perfectly healthy. Uh, in, in times past, people tried to, to block up the holes in order to protect the tree. And it turns out that the tree's own defensive mechanisms are better than when we try to introduce things. So it's better to not actually try to plug the holes, but just let the tree do that naturally um, at the end of the season after we take the spirals out. So you might see, when we go out, you'll see remnants of previous places where the tree has been tapped, but they've been healed up over one to two years of time. And I've been doing this a long time and I've never really seen trees develop infections at these sites where I, where I do it. Some people say it does happen, it can happen, but by using these sanitizing techniques, I think it reduces the, the chances of spreading infection between the trees. Mm -hmm. Typically for a small tree, it's up to it's 25 to 40 centimeters across, we'll just use one tap in a tree like that so that we don't overtax the, the health of that tree. But if a tree is bigger than that, up to 60 centimeters, then we can put a couple taps in, and then if it's 80 centimeters, we can put three taps in. And if it's in every 10 or 15 more centimeters of diameter, we can add taps. But typically, you only put two or three or four taps in a tree at the most, even if it was a big tree. So if a tree is less than 25 centimeters, you need to wait. And it might be a long wait. Um, I've planted some sugar maples in my, in my woods in order to try to increase my biodiversity and also so that some, some generation will have sugar maples. And I thought that maybe in 10 years, I'd be tapping some of my trees. But my tree, which started out maybe that big in 10 years, is now about two to three centimeters across. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be a while. So if you plant trees to increase your biodiversity and to provide for syrup into the future, you're really doing it for your children or grandchildren or another generation of people who will come along and find sugar maples and be very excited and run out and make maple syrup in 40 years from now. Mm -hmm.